This video is brought to you by Squarespace, and Beat 'em Ups is filmed in front of a live studio audience. I don't want to say this game is addicting, but <laughs> I can't stop playing. <laughs> Are you planning on doing anything besides playing Animal Crossing? Hmm. Uh, nope. Yeah, that sounds about right. All you do is play your Switch. Untrue! You dropped something? Yeah, I think she's on to me. I should probably review something other than Nintendo for once. Uh, clunky headsets aside, I do really enjoy VR gaming. Surprising some people probably, I have actually managed to find loads of really fun VR games over the last couple of years, like Astrobot, Job Simulator, Super Hot, and the ever exhausting Beat Saber being some of the standouts. I made a few videos about the PlayStation VR and it's okay. I ended up buying an Oculus Rift S for my PC so that I could further dive into this new exciting world of virtual reality video games. Oh, even if most of them do make me feel pretty motion sick. But for the most part, every fun VR game I could find still felt like a small tech demo for what was actually possible with virtual reality gaming. Then Half-Life Alex comes around and says, Ah, oh, yeah, nah, you know what, mate? You thought the Valve guy was creepy before? Look at this giant thing turning around to look at you. I struggle to believe how gorgeous this game is. Up until now, muddy and fuzzy visuals have been excused as part of VR's growing pains, but Alex is clean, crisp, and at times just breathtaking to behold. Did you look at that? It's beautiful. Visually, it manages to hold its own next to other AAA non-VR games being released today, even compared to other games in this very video. And gameplay-wise, this was honestly the first time I didn't feel restricted restricted, got confused, or frustrated by the simple act of trying to exist in a VR world. Something as small as trying to throw an object has been a nightmare for me in virtual reality. No object ever felt weighted correctly, and the game didn't seem to understand where I was trying to throw it. But as you can expect from a game in the Half-Life series, the physics are on point. Everything you can lift or interact with in the game has been weighted correctly, making throwing things a breeze and even needing both hands to lift heavier objects from your path. I mean, sure, there are still a few bugs. I found myself stopping and just playing around with bikes and pens and objects throughout my playthrough, amazed at how articulated everything was. And also amazed at how childish I am. Oh, and <laughs> these physics aren't just lying around the game for you to fool around with and draw. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> They're also used within the game, from fighting enemies to solving puzzles. This is where Half-Life Alex flexes its impressive game design. Finding new ways to have you interact with the environment in a way you only can in VR. It takes so long to collect all of these one by one. Throwing them in here to upgrade my gun always feels kind of terrible. <laughs> I am never gonna financially recover from this. But it's cool watching the 3D printer go to work and then wouldn't want to be on the wrong side of that. Grabbing out my new gun with its really cool sight. Like a great John Wick flick, the adventure is played out in real time over several hours of action, having you take every step in the journey through every street, house, and sewer system. The story unfolds around you as you explore the world of Half-Life. The combat is a breeze and becomes more and more exhilarating as the pacing picks up. I'd like to appreciate the easy and fun to use weapon wheel. Oh, what bam Oh, what bam And now I'm switching to this one. Now, what bam <laughs> Every gun feels feels amazing and accurate, and if the shotgun isn't your favorite, then you're doing it wrong. Loading up the shells, then T-1000 flicking the barrel back into position never gets old. The best part for me is the Russell and the Russells. I'm with you every step of the way. You're gonna need a gun. Don't worry, it's unloaded. It's unloaded now. 
Russell is your ally, very humorously voiced by Reese Darby, and the Russells are his gloves he has you try on at the start of the game without warning you about whatever happened to this guy, I guess. These gloves give you gravity gun style superpowers, being able to force bring any object towards you immediately. It's smooth, it's wonderful, it's delightful. <laughs> Especially for grabbing last minute ammo in a fight or catching an enemy grenade mid flight and yeeting it back. The Half-Life series has always been known for changing the game. For breaking new ground and showing us exactly what was possible in video games. The long awaited Half-Life 3 had so much to live up to. And in a day and age where games are progressing faster than ever, the idea of a Half-Life game being able to exceed all of our expectations wasn't as realistic as it was in 2004 when video games were still just gaining their footing in the world. Making that shift to virtual reality, a platform that only now is gaining its footing in the gaming world, was a brilliant idea by Valve because they managed to do exactly what they did back with Half-Life 2 again in Half-Life Alex, and that's they showed us what is possible. <laughs> Who put that there? If you're looking for your copy of Resident Evil 3, I think someone left it outside. Anonymous. Only Kim and I live here. Who could have wrote this? Also, they took the time to find the green marker to write the keywords. Well, that's actually very considerate. I didn't have to read the whole thing. <laughs> Oh, that was scary. This is probably a good time to take a break and talk about our sponsor. Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build beautiful websites super easy. I'm being honest when I say I have no idea how to do web design. Not a clue. Kim, do I have any idea how to do web design? Not a clue. Not a clue. <laughs> but with Squarespace's really easy and simple to use tools, I made a website! And I made this in like one afternoon. You can go and check it out now and bookmark it. I'm putting all my new videos up there. You can find my merch store finally <laughs> or even contact me if you want. I highly recommend you make your own website because I didn't know it was this easy. Whether it's for your own personal use or if you have a business. You can track your sales through the site, see how many people are visiting, and look how easy it is to edit or change anything on the site. You just double click and BAM! All the tools are right there and there's so much more you can do with it and Squarespace will show you all of that once you start. <sighs> Head to squarespace.com to start a free trial, and then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash beat-em-ups to get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. Resident Evil Remake <laughs> The Third. Well, they haven't made a remake of the original Resident Evil game in this style yet, so this remake is more of a direct sequel to last year's Resident Evil 2 remake. You even revisit some locations from that game, so I mean, in a way, Resident Evil 3 remake is actually Resident Evil 2 part two, you know, when you think about it. And I mean, obviously it's still a remake of the original PlayStation 1 game, and you know, back then that game was the third game released in the Resident Evil series, whereas this new remake of it it's technically the 13th game released in the main series. And that's if you don't count all the spin-offs, so... Alright, I'm just kidding. Just like last year's remake, RE32 Part 2 13 has had a complete overhaul. From the highly detailed city streets to the terrifying Nemi Leave Me Alone already says. I found out he doesn't come into the toy store. I don't, I don't know why that's the only place he won't chase you, but he looks really creepy out there. Yes, I'll leave and keep playing the game. Oh no, I'm just kidding. I'm going back to the toy store. I think if there's one thing we can all agree on, it's that both of these remakes look incredible. I mean, ooh. Ah. And for some reason, I find aiming in this game harder than finding good friends I can depend on. Where did that come from? It's clear that the gameplay and inventory has been refined and smoothed out since the last game. Which, weirdly, while I know it's objectively better here, I kind of like the somewhat tankier, slower style that the RE2 remake had. The atmosphere between these two games is fiercely different. Adding the ability to last minute dodge inherently increases the pacing dramatically and takes the game from a slow, tense, methodical action thriller to a more yeah, action adventure doom guy blasted your way through hordes of zombies to save the day. Which, yeah, it's great and all, and don't get me wrong, I love how 
action-packed this new game was from start to very quickly finished, but I absolutely preferred last year when I was crap my pants on edge scared while playing as Leon Kennedy. Considering this is a police station, does anyone else find it kind of weird that these cops leave notes on doors for other cops to find, leading them to where the key might be, rather than going and looking for the key themselves instead of writing a note about it? I mean, they're detectives for crying out loud. I swear, Raccoon City has the laziest police force. Actually, that reminds me. I never did figure out who left this note. I'm playing my game right now, so how could it be left outside? I should probably go investigate this for myself. This isn't my Resident Evil. This is my Doom Eternal. Hi. Lost my freaking marbles over Doom 2016's non-stop ripping, tearing, and face mountain. No matter where you skip around a YouTube playthrough of that game, you're guaranteed to land on some blood pumping action, and I live for it. I expected exactly the same high octane non-stop action from Doom Eternal. So here we go. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. But first, the action in this game has definitely been amped up to 11. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? Music is just as bad as it's ever. Hey, you know, can we turn it back down for a second? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Jeez. With a full arsenal of familiar weapons and a bunch of new gadgets on top, you'll be lighting up demons before calling them back off and then me blowing them up. Also, you get a gosh dang sword that slices through demons like butter, so y'all can go ahead and throw out that crappy old chainsaw. And change the catchphrase from rip and tear to rip and slice. All right, um... Okay, so I do have one of Wood's classic uh-ohs though, and just like always, my uh-ohs are like, yeah, my own little opinion and preference, so don't, don't take it the wrong way, but. I don't think the addition of platforming in the Doom Eternal was completely necessary, and I kind of hate it a lot. <gasps> in a game that is known for non-stop action, I find the platforming parts bring everything to a slam on the brake screeching halt. And each platforming part was a similar shtick, you know, jump, dash, stick to this next holy wall. Throughout the game, it never really became much more complex than that, other than a few cool secret areas and some poles to dance on. Literally, my only deaths in this game weren't from the giant demon bosses. No, it was from me missing a jump and slipping to my demise. Having to be set back to the start of that platforming segment, frustrated, desperately just wanting to get back into the rip and slice action, and annoyed my game's death count was being artificially inflated by these basic platforming segments. I mean, I mean, this is Doom Guy. He's supposed to be ripping through hordes of demons with his bare hands and giant hunking guns. Not flipping all over poles and slipping to his death countless times like an idiot. But ultimately, this one is so much better and cooler that I really don't care. <laughs> I just want to thank everyone for watching this video. Clearly I'm trying to do a few different things on this channel and I want to do more of these, like really structured and fun reviews of video games. But I don't want to lose that very not structured personal touch that I have in a lot of my other videos, like just sitting down and rambling and playing a video game. So I hope that you'll stick around for both of those. Hey, like the video and subscribe please because this took a lot. <laughs> All right, bye.